The purpose of this tutorial is to introduce the key elements of the HVAC tab, which is where most of the ventilation, heating, cooling and domestic hot water parameters are defined. These determine the energy consumption of the building's HVAC and domestic hot water services in conjunction with factors such as environmental control set points. During this tutorial I'll briefly review the different HVAC types and look at template selection and the key data inputs. There are three primary HVAC definition methods in Design Builder. Simple for HVAC is the default method which you can see is selected here. The more complex compact method can be selected in model options. Here. Detailed HVAC system definition is allowed from version 3 of the software onwards. Simple HVAC uses an idealized load calculation method in Energy Plus with fuel consumption being calculated from the Energy Plus loads using constant seasonal efficiency values or const coefficients of performance for boilers and chillers. Compact HVAC uses a more detailed cal calculation method in Energy Plus and a range of HVAC system types and components such as coils, heat recovery, fans, economizers, boilers and chillers can be included. This tutorial will concentrate on simple HVAC systems to cover the basic HVAC concepts, but as always, more HVAC detail is available in the help file. The default Fancor Unit HVAC template is loaded, as shown under the template header at the top of the tab here. There are a number of different types of template available. which reflect the different performance characteristics of the variety of HVAC systems which can be used in buildings. There may well be more than one HVAC system used in your building and as always you should load the most commonly occurring system at building level. The template selected determines which of the mechanical ventilation, heating and cooling systems is enabled by default. A fan coil system can include all of these, therefore they're all enabled but can be switched off by unchecking any of the boxes. The DHW header includes the information related to the domestic hot water system and this will always be switched on by default. The template loads the default operating parameters for the heating and cooling systems such as the fuel type and coefficient of performance. And it will automatically set the auxiliary energy consumption of fans and pumps. An alternative auxiliary energy definition method is to use the separate fans and pumps option in model options. Here. In many cases this will be preferable. I'll leave the fan core unit template loaded and now review the key inputs for each of the main HVAC headers. There are five outside air definition methods which enable you to model mechanical ventilation fresh air delivery rates in different ways. Selecting the by zone method enables you to specify the air changes per hour in each zone using the slider control. Or the arrow control. The minimum fresh air per person method bases the ventilation rate in each zone on the occupancy density 
in the activity tab here and also on the fresh air litres per second per person setting here. The megavent per area litres per second meter squared can be input here and this is the value used when the definition method is set to minimum fresh air per area. This method is used when there's a specific requirement to ventilate zones with normally low occupancy levels such as circulation spaces. The final two methods use the sum of the per person and the per area values and the maximum of the two values according to the zone type. The mechanical ventilation operating schedule is not loaded by the activity tab so must be set manually. The auxiliary energy consumption is set by the template but can be amended if actual system data is available or specified using the separate fans and pumps option as discussed earlier. Moving on to the heating header the primary inputs are the heating fuel and the heating system coefficient of performance which includes distribution losses. I'll change these to biomass at an efficiency of 80%. There is an option to change the heating type to radiant oblique convective, but you should be aware that selecting this will slow simulations down significantly and so it should only be selected when the radiant fraction of the heating system really must be modelled, for example for heated floors. For typical hot water radiators and baseboard heaters with radiant heating fractions of 0.2 or less, you'll normally be better off using the standard 100% convective heating system and accepting a small inaccuracy. The heating and cooling schedules are loaded automatically by the activity template, but bespoke schedules can of course be created and loaded if required. It's always a good idea to run a quick simulation to check that your building model is working correctly. I've just quickly run a simulation for the design winter week. From this we can see our internal and external temperatures with the system controlling temperatures according to daytime and setback set points. The heat balance here shows our heat gains and losses in kilowatts and the zone heating graph below shows that the plant is working hard in the mornings to bring the building up to temperature but then reduces during the day as the building temperature increases and internal heat gains and higher ambient temperatures reduce the load on the heating system. The bottom graph shows the total ventilation rate and profile due to the combination of mechanical ventilation and infiltration. Note that natural ventilation is currently switched off. The key cooling input parameters are the cooling plant fuel type and the cooling system coefficient of performance again including distribution losses. I'll leave this set to grid electricity and change the COP to a higher or better value of 2.5. Please note that the HVAC systems operate according to both the time schedules set in this tab here 
and the environmental control set points here in the activity tab. These are set automatically by the activity template for each zone but can be adjusted manually if required. The domestic hot water system has its own template which can be selected from the library amended, copied and edited or a new template created in the normal manner. The DHW system types are self-explanatory as you can see from this drop-down list. For most of the options you simply set the appropriate type and enter the operating parameters here. If you select option 1 same as HVAC, the calculations will be performed based on the, on the fuel type and COP set for the heating system. The natural ventilation option should be selected when you wish to include assessment of the impact of a natural ventilation scheme. It's worth reiterating at this point that the scheduled natural ventilation option is used throughout this series of tutorials but the calculated natural ventilation option is covered in a later tutorial. Note that natural ventilation is defined as the deliberate ventilation through windows, vents and doors not to be confused with infiltration due to airflow through cracks and building fabric porosity which is set on the construction tab you can specify the details by zone where you can set the ventilation rate in each zone using the slider or arrow controls or using the minimum fresh air per person criteria as discussed earlier. I'll set the ventilation rate to one air change per hour switch off mechanical ventilation and reduce infiltration to 0.3 air changes per hour. I've quickly run a summer design week simulation you can see that the internal air temperature is being controlled according to the 24 degrees C environmental control set point. Note also the higher ambient temperature on the Monday compared to the remaining days of the working week. Looking at the internal gains, the cooling plant appears to be operating as expected with the higher ambient temperatures on the Monday and the additional heat stored in the thermal mass from higher weekend internal temperatures requiring a greater cooling input. Going to the ventilation heat balance we can see that the increased ventilation is creating an increased cooling load when the ambient temperatures are very high on the Monday but reduces the cooling load on the other days when the temperatures are lower. The ventilation profile also shows the reduced air change and in infiltration rates. So our model appears to be giving us sensible results it's always worth running the heating and cooling calculations and summer winter design week simulations and reviewing hourly results before running full annual simulations to check for possible errors in data entry. In this tutorial I've reviewed the key inputs in the HVAC tab and discussed the benefits of running quick calculations and simulations 
to sanity check your model before running full annual simulations.